What's up, gangsters? It's random time. Okay, so here we go, right as it lays on my bench when I walked up to it. This is pretty cool. Um, this is a magazine that I was not familiar with before Marcus Nichols, who is the editor of uh, Tamiya Model Magazine and who runs this, uh, this whole group, uh, suggested that uh, he put an article in it that I had done. Um, he had asked me if I wanted to do a thing about the silly take em truck, the Kraz 260. And um, so I was like, yeah, whatever you think, man. I I'm just stoked that you feel like publishing it. So um, yeah, I am stoked. They did a really nice job. I mean, this is a really beautiful spread. They uh, put my article in, uh, you know, with only the, uh, the only thing that they edited was, you know, changing things like color to that weird British uh, way of spelling it. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm, I'm really stoked. You know, I don't do a lot of this kind of stuff, but it is fun to see your work in print sometimes. And it's always nice when it's a really high quality publication. And this is, I like the layout. Um, it's got that cool you know, a British A4 size thing going on, so that makes it sort of exotic. I like the satin finished paper, the uh, the big photography. I mean, it's good. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Um, I may have mentioned this one before, but I couldn't remember, so what the heck. Um, they uh, Marcus also ran one of my things last August, which I was really stoked about. It's an older build. My uh, Hasegawa Machine & Krieger Griffin um, that I built actually in 2016. I had written an article for it for another magazine that never got off the ground. Now that I'm saying that out loud, I think I did mention that already, so I won't, uh, I won't say any more about that. But anyway, it is fun. Both good magazines. If you're into the magazine thing, definitely check them out. Now, here's what else is happening. I am still uh, working away on my current Machine and Krieger project and I uh, did some painting and weathering. You can't see it now because it's all masked off right there but this door thing here is going to be a mismatched color to the to the rest of it which is going to be a two-tone green camo and I've been busy mixing some MRP. Uh, you can see right here I took a couple tries to get what I wanted. Uh, my first go-round was was way too John Deere green. That's this one right here, and I'm happier with this one. And it's gonna and it's gonna be uh, combined with this RAF dark green. So, what I've been doing here is practicing, practicing, practicing my freehand camo spraying skills, and uh, it's been good. I, I I just I cannot overemphasize how important it is to have paint mules around and to practice before it really matters. And I've been working on these with two things. I did some of this over here using my Iwata Neo, which has a 0.35 millimeter needle in it. And you can see it's a little hazy, not as sharp around the edges as I'd like for it to be. Uh, but I wanted to see how it would do. Uh, then I switched over to my Badger Sotar and uh, it's got a 0.18 millimeter needle in it and this thing is pretty customized. Um, it's got this uh, high boy high roller trigger which makes it a little easier for me to control. Wow it's also got a little paint in there because it's not wanting to to return back. Um, I tend not to strip this thing down to clean it. It's just so easy to clean. Uh, but anyway, um, and then it's got this plastic thing on here that somebody found on Amazon and that I got and it has really helped me a lot. I, I really could not use this thing very well before just because my hands being as, as stiff and clumsy as they are. But this gives me something more to hold on to. I had to modify it quite a bit to get it to work uh, with this fitting down here and this part that extended back here. But uh, it really does work a lot better for me. And one of the cool things about the Sotar is that you can retard the needle so that all you have to do is push the button down and it'll release paint. 
Now, what the hell did I just say? So this the Sotar is kind of unique in that it's got this needle stop back here, but because of this ball thing on the end of the needle, if you just keep unscrewing the needle stop until it starts pushing up against the ball, it basically opens the needle. See what I mean? And so what you can do is just set the needle to be cracked slightly open, and that means that all you have to do is push the button and it releases paint. You kind of have to dial it in, get the pressure right and all that stuff, but with MRP especially it's nice because you know, if you're doing a lot of real fine work and your finger gets tired or it's clumsy like mine, uh, it, can, it can really help you. Um, and I've learned some things about uh, doing this. One thing uh, is, and some dudes in SMCG were talking about this, is, is breaking one of the rules that I talked about in my video about spray discipline the other day. Rather than spraying straight at the workpiece, you want to angle so that your overspray falls inside the uh, area of color that you're laying down. That helps you get a tighter demarcation uh, and yet still give you that slightly fuzzy look uh, that you know represents a, uh, uh, a sprayed camo. Another thing that I've been experimenting with a little bit that helps is using one of these UMP buffers where I found that where it is a little bit hazy that you can uh, give it a, a, good, a good rub with the buffer and those few little tiny specks of paint that are, are laying around outside the demarcation uh, go away and, uh, and you can definitely tighten it up a little bit. You can see where on that, that uh, light green and John Deere green area right there, it did look a lot more like this until I ran the buffer over it, and that uh, definitely kind of helped dehaze it a little bit. Not perfect, I mean, obviously you don't want to depend on that, but it is, uh, it is good for a little bit of cleanup. And also with MRP, because uh, IPA will actually remove it pretty easily if you're very, very careful. A brush lightly dipped in IPA and maybe a, you know uh, wicked off a little bit so it doesn't have quite so much on there. You can use to uh, uh, do a little bit of erasing uh, if you have uh, if you have a little bit of overspray. But you have to be very careful because you'll go straight through it into the plastic almost in a in a heartbeat. Um, also, let's see here. I need something. I'm going to get this. Try and get this quick. Um, we were having a little bit of a debate on SMCG about uh, tools, as we often do, and uh, we're talking about uh, sprue cutters, and um, you know, kind of getting into the whole thing about single blade design versus double blade design. The single blade design uh, being what you find on things like the God Hand SPN 120, the new ones from Ming, uh, Dispier, if I'm saying that right, um, and uh, uh, who else? There's another one. Uh, Gundam Planet, which are the ones I have. Anyway, the thing about the double blade design, also Tamiya's, or single blade design, the thing about single blade design is that what it has is a blade and an anvil. So it works like a knife um, rather than as a pinching device. You can't really see it, but one of these is not a blade. Okay, I think the blade is, is, is on the, is on the, the left side. Um, and, and the challenge that was out there was, I don't think you can really make a cut that you don't have to sand. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I do it all the time. Um, and so I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, so let's just do it. Let's just do a quick couple of cuts right here. Bink, just like that. It's so tight that it's hard to actually withdraw the cutter sometimes. Okay, so let's take a look at that and see if we need to sand them. And I am saying probably Probably not, maybe just a tiny bit. Let's see. 
Oh, pretty close. Would be better if we can look at it from the from the side. Um, I mean, there may there there is a tiny, 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 tiny little little witness there. I mean, but that's that's not bad, and I think it may be because uh, I need to adjust these things. They may not be closing all the way. These have a, uh, a limit screw in them that uh, sometimes if it gets screwed too far in, it'll keep the blades from, from closing all the way. I gotta check the time here. Crap! That is that is 10 minutes, I, but I'm gonna finish. Um, the most common one that you see out there that's the double blade design are these Zurons. And I remember back when I used to think they were awesome. Um, and now I use them for trash cuts only. I mean, you can just hear it. That tells you what's going on. It's more of a pinching thing than it is a slicing thing. And yeah, I mean, there you go. That's that's what you get, cutting as close as you can with a Zuron. But that's still better than the massive pinch you get out of something like this that is basically just a you know, an extra extra sharp pincher. I mean, sure, they're cheap, and yeah, you can do it. Oh, crap. Uh, of course. And now, uh, you definitely are going to have to do some, some sanding. But hey, you know, if you don't mind cutting and sanding, then, you know, there you go. Get on with your bad self. Get to it. I, on the other hand, prefer to work smarter, not harder. And there you go. That is definitely 10 minutes. That's enough. Bye.